you will learn to make successful job applications. You will master creating the perfect CV and we will identify and review the common mistakes made. And you will look to your next steps in education. And of course we'll finish as always with a summary. No look ahead to the next lesson but of course a Q&A. So it's all very emotional. It's our final lesson but we will save the tears for the end of the lesson okay for now let's just jump straight in and begin with job applications so what do we think what different types of job applications are there so what different types of job applications do we come across in today's world and it's very simple we come across both physical and online job applications so a physical one means a piece of paper that you write on, but more commonly we have online applications. So most companies will offer an online application, just like this here, okay? This is what we would most encounter online or on job sites when you are applying for a job. So what are my top tips? for filling out a job application. So I've compiled these together to make everything easy for you guys. So let's go through these. And my first top tip, I'm sure you can all guess, is to read it carefully. Read the entire form carefully. Know what is being asked before you fill out the form, okay? Employers may use the application form to judge how well you follow instructions and how careful you may be as an employee, okay? So read it carefully, make sure you know what's being asked and then fill it out, okay? If you answer questions incorrectly on a job application, then straight away that's a red flag for an employer and they'll say, this person doesn't even know how to follow simple instructions. Throw that away. We don't want him or her, okay? So read it carefully, please. It's very simple. Next up, fill in all the fields, okay? What do I mean by fields? I mean every empty section, okay? Answer all questions. Fill in the blanks completely, accurately, and truthfully. When something doesn't apply to you, write N-A, okay? Don't just leave it blank. If it doesn't apply to you, write N-A, and that means non-applicable or not applicable. It does not apply to you, okay? Then check your answers for correct spelling, grammar, punctuation, now that we all know how to use punctuation, and accuracy, okay? So make sure everything is filled out. If it's something that doesn't apply to you, use NA, because then the employer knows you've seen it, but it's not applicable. Next up, the position. Now, when I say position, I mean the job, the job you are going for, okay? And do not just say anything. Make sure you give a specific job title because this shows that you're not desperate, that you do have one job or one goal in mind. If you send a job application to a company and just say you're looking for any job, they're not going to hire you because they'll think that you're not ready for any of the specific jobs, okay? So that's why you need to make sure to give a specific job. Next up, expected salary. Now this is a tricky one, this is a tricky one. Employers may use this question to screen out applicants, okay? To whittle them down, to get rid of some applicants. So what I would say, this is just my tip, I would say to give a salary range, so for example, 25 to 27,000 or something. So a range, not an exact salary. 
from this amount to this amount or write negotiable and negotiable means that you are willing to negotiate you're willing to talk about what salary you would receive okay use one of these responses even if you know the wage okay still use one of these because it leaves you room to try and get a higher wage later okay so think about that I would always say negotiable because then at least it won't be until the interview that you have to mention it next up your personal info okay this is very straightforward just make sure you give an accurate email and phone number that's the main thing that's how they will contact you so your personal information make sure it's accurate so they can contact you now next up we've got education and training work experience and special job related skills I am not going to go into these right now because we will cover them in detail in the next section in the CV section okay so education and training work experience and special job related skills we are going to look at in a few minutes so don't worry about those next up reason for leaving okay now be careful when giving a reason for leaving your previous job or your current job if you're working at the moment be careful even if your previous boss was a was a jerk or an Egypt you remember that word from lesson six so even if your boss was an Egypt you should never be negative okay always try and give an answer like conflicting hours or a better opportunity for advancement a lack of work okay try and give a reason that is positive you're looking for more challenging work okay your hours were conflicting never say I hated the job it was boring my boss was an Egypt okay don't be negative we never want to come across negative about anything in a job application next up your references okay now references are people who can people who can give give an account of how you are in work okay they're called referees so when you give references they are people who will talk highly of you former managers former employers and most employers will call references okay so make sure you tell the person if you are using them as a reference and the biggest point don't use relatives okay even if your father was your manager or your father was your boss or your mother was your team leader don't use relatives as a reference because it looks bad it looks like they weren't actually working with you you just have them on the job application so they'll say nice things about you so don't use relatives as a reference because it looks bad and finally your last details okay make sure to include a current date okay so the current date check carefully that you have completed the application filled out every field once you fill out this application okay it's a binding document that means anything that you have lied about any misinformation could be a reason for you to get fired for termination of your contract so make sure that everything is correct and if you are asked when you can begin working make sure to allow enough time to give notice to your current employer so they are the final details just check over everything check over everything okay so guys what do we think which of the following is unprofessional for a job application using negotiable for the expected salary 
listing your skills, using your Shaw Academy diploma for education and training, talking negatively about a former job. So which of these is unprofessional for a job application? Well, let's go through them. Using negotiable for the expected salary, that's perfectly okay. Listing your skills, of course, of course you would do that on a job application. Using your Shaw Academy diploma for education and training, some of you may be wondering that, of course you can. This is why you are doing this course, to improve your CV, to improve your skills. So of course, it is number four. Very well done, Shima, Marima, Iman, Goethe, everyone, Nevin, Varalakshmi, who got that one right. Never talk negatively about a former job, even if it was terrible, even if the, if the job was crap, okay? Don't talk negatively about it. Try put a positive spin. You need more challenging work, okay? You had conflicting hours. They didn't have enough hours, okay? So there's lots of positive spins you can put on it. Now, we've looked at the job application and that leads us into the next part. After the job application, you will usually need to submit your CV, okay? So hold off all the questions about CVs because I am going to tell you now. CV stands for curriculum vitae and that is a Latin word for, or sorry, a Latin phrase for course of life, okay? So CV means curriculum vitae and it's Latin for course of life. And this is a summary of your experience, your skills, and your education. Now, it's worth noting that those of you in the USA and Canada, it is known as a resume, and this is actually the French word for summary, okay? So in the USA and Canada, they call it a resume, but it's the exact same, CV, resume. I am going to call it a CV for the rest of the lesson because that's what we call it here in Ireland. Now, before we write our CV, let's look at some top tips because we love Mark's top tips. They're the best. What is our first top tip? Keep it concise. I can't stress this enough. What does concise mean? Who can tell me what concise means? So keep it concise. What does that mean? Who can tell me? Get typing in those chat boxes. Of course, it means short, okay? Not too long. Usually, a CV should be no more than two pages. No more than two pages. That's two A4 pages. At the very, very, very most, you can have three but try and keep it to two pages. And the reason for this, employers spend on average eight seconds looking at any one CV, eight seconds. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm not going to count to eight, but you get the point, okay? So if they only spend eight seconds looking at it, a definite way of getting your CV passed by is to have it too long. So keep it punchy, keep it short, keep it to the point. Save any difficult or long details for the interview. Just keep it concise. Have all the important information easy to read in short sentences. Next up, tailor it to the job. This is also so important. What does tailor it mean? Well, if you get a suit tailored, what does it mean? It means it is made to fit you, okay? If you get a tailored suit, it's made for you. It's made to fit you. So, tailor your CV to the job. Make the CV to fit the job you are applying for. So if you're throwing out 
20 or 30 CVs to lots of different employers, don't send out the same one. It's a mistake everyone makes. Edit your CV for each job. Take the time to change it. Research the company and use the job advertisement to work out what skills you should point out to them. They will appreciate this effort and it will get you noticed. Next up, include a personal statement or a professional summary. Now, we will look at this in the sample CV later on, but basically don't just assume an employer will see how your experience relates to their job. Instead, use this personal statement or professional summary to explain why you are the best person for the job. And this is on the first page of the CV, as we'll see in a couple of minutes. Next up, don't leave gaps. Do not leave any gaps. If you have obvious gaps on your CV, two years between two different jobs, okay, then that immediately will make the employer suspicious, okay? Why was he not working for these two years? Where was she for this six months, okay? It makes them suspicious. And they won't give you the benefit of the doubt because they have 800 other CVs to go through and to choose from. So if you've been out of work, it can be worrying, but like everything, just put a positive spin on it, okay? For example, did you do a course? Maybe you're, you're out of work now, but look, you're doing an English course. So include that on your CV. During this time, I upskilled myself by learning English, by learning this. Maybe you did some charity work or volunteer work. Include that. Did you develop any skills such as communication, teamwork or management? If so, talk about it. Don't just leave an obvious gap between two pieces of employment, like a, a year-long gap, okay? Make sure you explain it in a positive way. Next up, keep it updated. Even if you are in a job, even if you've been in the same job for 10 years, you should keep your CV up to date, whether you're looking for a job or not. Every time something significant occurs in your career, record it so you don't forget about something that could be important later on, okay? As soon as you get your certificate for this course, update your CV. You may forget in a couple of years or a couple of months. So always keep your CV updated. Next up, the error of your ways. Now, what do I mean by this? What I mean employers do look for mistakes on CVs and if they find them it makes you look really bad so if an employer has 800 applicants 800 CVs to go through then any excuse for them to dismiss your application they will jump at so if there's a mistake whether it's spelling or grammar then that's an excuse for them to say, okay, that's him gone, that's her gone, bad spelling, bad grammar, see you later. Okay, now I've only 799 CVs to go through. Okay, Yara, concise means short and to the point. Okay, short, easy to read information, only what's important. That's what concise means. So, Make sure to double check, triple check that you've no mistakes or errors in your CV. Next up, tell the truth. It should be obvious, but people always lie on their CV. And please don't. Stop it. Lies on your CV can land you in a whole heap of trouble when it comes to checking your background and checking your references, okay? So the last thing you want is to get the job, start work, and then 
lose it two months later because of something small you lied about on your CV, okay? Or you never know, you could be in the interview and they could mention something you lied about and you don't know how to talk about it. And that would be very, very awkward. Not that it's ever happened to me, I should say. <laughs> so the next tip, make it look good. We live in a world where image is everything. It's all about how things look and that also goes for your CV. So take some time to make it easy to read. Use bullet points, keep sentences short, make all the information easily presented, okay? Use the L trick of having lots of empty space around important things so the text is easy to read and easy on the eye. And the final one, make it keyword friendly, okay? What do I mean here? If you are using a job site, if you've uploaded your CV to a job site so recruiters can find you, then keywords are very important because that's what they will search. Job titles and job buzzwords will help a search engine pick out your CV, okay? So what, what do I mean? If you're going for a marketing job, and you're putting your CV on a job site, make sure to mention search engine optimization, direct marketing, digital marketing, among your experience and skills. Because then when a recruiter searches for this, your CV will come up, okay? So make it, C, or sorry, make it keyword friendly. If I was uploading my CV to be an English teacher onto a job site, I would use, keywords like teach, English, learners, experience, okay, native, non-native, second language, first language. They would be keywords that I would use to make sure that my CV could be found on a job site. And that's what many people do. We use, we have a site called jobs.ie here in Ireland and that's actually how I found my job here at the Shaw Academy using jobs.ie so it is very helpful now they're the top tips for making this CV so let's put it all into practice let's look at a CV okay so let's start off here whose CV will we make well what better CV is there to make then mine, Mark Kennelly. So here we have another good point. Do not have CV, resume or curriculum vitae as the title. They are not the title. The title of your CV is you. You want the employer to remember your name. You are the title. This is all about you. Okay, so that's the first thing. Next up is your personal information. So this is very easy. Make sure you have your accurate address, phone number and email, okay? And please, please, please make sure it's a professional email, not manunitedrule at gmail.com or beerlover at yahoo.co.uk, all right? Make sure it's a professional email, just like this, Mark Kennelly at shawacademy.com. Now, I would like to point out that this is not my real address and this is not my real phone number. So don't be getting any ideas, guys, okay? Now, next up in your personal information, what about your date of birth? What about your nationality? Should we include these on your CV? What do you think? Or let me rephrase that. Do we have to include these on your CV? Are they, are they necessary? Are they compulsory? Do we need to include them? Okay, Linda says not anymore and Maria says no also. So 
I would completely agree with you, or at least in Europe anyway. For your date and sir, for your date of birth or nationality, you do not need to include them. But what I would say, if it gives you an advantage, include them. What do I mean by this? Think about think about this example. I'm going for a job as an English teacher. I'm tailoring my CV for the job of an English teacher. Should I include my nationality because I'm Irish? Would I include it? What do we think? Would that give me an advantage? Okay, would being Irish give me an advantage if I'm looking for an English teaching job? And the answer, of course, that's a yes is coming in. Yes, unfortunately, in the world we live in, it would. It would give me an advantage because English is my first language. Therefore, if they see nationality Irish, they know that English will be my first language. So it gives me an advantage. So if your date of birth or your nationality gives you an advantage, then include it. Otherwise, you don't need to. Now, next up, what about a photograph? Now, lots of people think differently about photographs. And I am aware that it's different in different parts of the world, okay? I know that in the Middle East, you need a photograph. Or certainly in some Middle Eastern countries, you must have a photograph on your CV. But I'm, more, I'm talking more about Europe and the US and Canada. And my general tip would be no, okay? Generally... No, I would not include a photo on your CV because it should not be needed, okay? But I am aware that in certain countries it is required. Now, obviously, a lot of this could be different in different parts of the world. I am focusing more on Europe and English-speaking countries, okay? So that's what I would be focusing on. Now, next up... We've got our professional summary or our personal statement. So we talked about this in the top tips. Now this should be a short statement describing your work style or management approach. And look here, use buzzwords, buzzwords. Now, what are buzzwords? Buzzwords, very simply, are words that get your attention. Words that catch the reader's attention. So this is where you tailor it to the job and try and include words and qualities and styles that will catch the reader's attention. So let's look. I'm going for a teaching job. So let's look at my professional summary. Enthusiastic and personable educator with a passion for teaching who excels in a results-driven environment. Vast experience teaching classes of all sizes, from one-to-one -one tutorials to massive multinational webinars. Now, let's look at the buzzwords here. Enthusiastic, personable, okay, passion for teaching, excels in results-driven environment, vast experience, classes of all sizes, massive multinational webinars, okay? These are buzzwords, buzzwords, okay? They catch the reader's attention. So that is tailored towards a teaching job. If you read that, you think, wow, he's enthusiastic, he's personable, he loves teaching, this and that, he's lots of experience, okay? So, that is what you should be aiming to do with your professional summary. But obviously, tailor it to the job that you are applying for. So, some of these qualities might not apply for an accountant, for example. So, make sure you're tailoring it to the specific job. 
Now let's move on to the next part of our CV, which is the work history, okay? Your work history or your relevant work experience. Now, there are many, many different ways you can organize this. I have laid it out in a very simple way. Remember, we want our CV to be easy to read. We want the employer to be able to find any piece of information they're looking for. So this is just an example of how I lay out my CV. So let's look at our most recent. When we do work history or relevant work experience, always start with your most recent and work backwards. So here we have the date, March 2015 to present. Okay, that means I am still working here. March 2015 to present. And then the position, head of English faculty, and then the company and where they're located. So head of English faculty, Shaw Academy, Dublin, Ireland. Very simple. You don't need any more details than that. Now, let's look at our roles or responsibilities in the company. And this is where we want to use bullet points to make everything easy to read and clear. Okay, so Mark was the head of the English faculty. Okay, but what did he do? Well, let's see. Designed and taught both foundation and advanced level online English courses. Conducted live webinars to over 8,000 students each month. Held one-to-one -one phone consultations with students. Participated in student interactions across all social media platforms. Now look at that. They were the responsibilities or the duties carried out in that job. And look again at the buzzwords. So, for work history or relevant work experience, first of all, only include relevant work experience. Only include work experience that have some qualities which will benefit you in the job you're applying for. Bullet point your achievements, duties, and responsibilities. And use action words. So, Notice that I did not write I designed and I taught, I conducted, I held, I participated. No, when you're doing this on CVs, get rid of the personal pronoun I and just start your sentences with the action words, managed, increased, created, designed, taught, conducted, held, participated, action words, okay? Because it tells the employer that this is what you did. You did this. You did this. Okay? So it's a little tip that we use on CVs. Now let's move to our next piece of work experience. September 2013 to February 2015. English language teacher. That's the position. Where? International house. The mam. Saudi Arabia. Okay. So, Mark was also a teacher in Saudi Arabia, in a school. Now let's look at his responsibilities or his duties. Taught small to mid-sized classes of non-native speaking industry professionals. Covered general, technical and business English from elementary to advanced levels. Constructed assessments and examinations monthly. Prepared advanced students for IELTS exams with a 100% pass rate. So look again. Taught, covered, constructed, prepared, action words. Now let's move on. September 2012 to June 2013. English language tutor, Ecole de Langue, Paris, France. And that really just means language school, okay? Language school in Paris, France. Ecole de Langue. And let's see our responsibilities. 
tutored small groups of English learners from ages 11 to 17. Created fun and interactive activity-based classes. Chaperoned students on various class excursions. Okay, so this word chaperoned, if you chaperone children, it's you're supervising them. You accompany them and you supervise them. Okay, so accompanied and supervised students on various class excursions. And excursions just means class trips. Class trips. So again, action words, tutored, created, chaperoned. So look at all those action words. It shows all the different responsibilities and duties I had. Now, usually three, three different jobs would be enough, okay? If you really need to include another one, that's no problem. You can squeeze it in. But remember, we want to try keep this CV to two pages. So, after work history, we move on to education. And education is the same as work history. Start with the most recent. However, with education, we don't go into too much detail. So, education, you'll simply give your qualification, the year you received it, and the institute you received it from. And that's all the information that you need. So, CELTA qualification, 2014, that's the year I got it. Language Centre Ireland, which is located in Dublin, Ireland. Very simple. Then, work backwards. Masters in Arts in English, okay? in 2013 in the University College Cork which is in Cork Ireland work backwards again Bachelor of Arts in Language Studies 2011 Trinity College Dublin which is located in Dublin Ireland and that is enough detail okay if you want you can include your your high school examinations or anything like that, your SATs or the Leaving Cert or A-levels, depending on what country you are in, but that would be enough. The education is just looking for your qualifications more than anything else. Now, next up, we move on to key skills. Now, it's time to show off, okay? So, what are your strengths? And it's time to show off and tell the employer about your strengths. Now, what I advise to do is split your skills into categories. So first up, interpersonal skills. Okay, that means how you interact with other people. Interpersonal skills. So short, snappy sentences to show off. Confident public speaker. So that's obviously a good one for teaching. You can speak in public confidently. Adapted to speak to language learners. Another great one for an English teacher, okay? So I have adapted to speak well to language learners, as I'm sure all of you can agree. Now let's look at our next set of skills. Computer skills. There are very few jobs out there anymore where you will not have to use a computer at some stage. So computer skills are very important. Look here. Competent in all Microsoft Office programs. So competent means you can use, okay, without problems. You can use all Microsoft Office programs without problems. You're competent in all of them. Next up, proficient in the, use, in the use of Photoshop. Now, proficient means you're very good, okay? You're excellent. Proficient in the use of Photoshop. You excel, and that's true. I, I've taken the Photoshop and the advanced Photoshop courses here in Shaw Academy, so I am proficient in the use of Photoshop. Experienced Salesforce user. 
Okay, so Salesforce is just a tool that is used in many companies. Okay, it's a website or an app that is used in many companies. So if you're familiar with things like this, include it. Experienced Salesforce user. Next up, and this is one that all of you should be including, language skills, guys, language skills. Every single one of you has at least two languages. You have your native language, and what other language do you have? What's the second language that every single one of you has? <laughs> of course, of course, English. And don't be afraid to say it, okay? Every single one of you has your native language, whether it's Indian, Arabic, Spanish, French, whatever it may be. But you've also got English. And Hira is saying you have four languages. So make sure to mention them. Because imagine this. Two identical CVs. Okay? Two people that are almost identical. However, one person speaks three languages. And the other person only speaks English. Well then, you're obviously going to choose the person who has English, Spanish and Arabic over the one who just has English. So, don't be afraid to show off the languages you have. And you can slightly exaggerate here, slightly. So just as an example of what you can say. Intermediate level French. Okay, so maybe I would have that on my CV. I learned French for six years. Okay, so intermediate level French. Conversational Arabic. Now, conversational is a nice one to use because it doesn't really mean much. If you say conversational, what it really means is you have enough words or enough vocabulary to hold a small conversation. So if you know a little bit of a language, you can include it as conversational. For a lot of you, I would say proficient, proficient English or advanced level English. If you're not that confident, use intermediate. All of you should be at least intermediate level English, okay? So show off your languages. And then the final section I would use is personal skills. And this is where you can add anything else in, like strong attention to detail, work well under pressure, okay? So they're things that employers like to see. So include them. You can copy that exactly if you want. I don't mind. Now, moving on to the final section of our CV, we have further qualifications and achievements. So let's look at qualifications first. So anything further which you have not mentioned in education. So any certificates, any training courses, anything you want to include. If you think it will help or it gives, it shows good abilities about yourself, then include it. So I have TEFL qualification, teaching English as a foreign language qualification obviously. Next up, a full ECDL. This stands for European Computer Driving License and that is a test you do to show that you can use a computer and all of its programs and functions. And I know, I know they, they use one, now this is European Computer Driving License, but I know you have a similar one in the Middle East. I think it's called the ICDL. I think lots of places have the equivalent of it. Next up, full driving license. Always good to include just in case. Full driving license. Why not? It can't hurt. Now, next up, diploma in English. Okay, all of you are currently on diploma in English for beginners. Advanced diploma in nutrition. What do you think? Should we include these in further qualifications? What do we think, guys? Let me know in your chat box. Should we include these in further qualifications? Hmm, I wonder. Oh, <laughs> yeah, lots of, well, a big, 
A big of course from Mohammed. <laughs> okay. Some people saying no. Of course we should, guys. Of course you should. These show that you have upskilled yourself outside of work, okay? These show that you have been constantly trying to improve yourself. Self-improvement outside of work. That's brilliant for an employer to see. That's what they want to see. It shows you've got drive. It shows you're committed. You're ambitious, okay? So absolutely include these. Now, what about these next ones? 2015 Dublin Marathon finisher. Captain of Barn Hall Rugby Football Club first team. Volunteered in Kenya for three months. Okay, so what about these three? Do you think we should include these? Marathon finisher, captain of the rugby team, volunteered in Kenya for three months. Should we include these? People say no again. Well, let me ask you a question. If you completed a marathon, what does that say about you? What does it say about you if you completed a marathon? It says you're committed. It says you're dedicated. It says you don't give up, okay? So you have to think about what these achievements say about your character, okay? So if you finished a marathon, you're committed. You don't give up. Of course it shows that you're sporty. If you're captain of the rugby club, what does that say? It shows that you work well as part of a team. It also shows you can be a leader, okay? You're captain of the team. You have leadership qualities. So you've got teamwork, you've got leadership. So definitely include them. Volunteered in Kenya for three months. Absolutely, charity work. It shows you don't only care about yourself, you do things for other people, to help other people. So these are all absolutely brilliant to include in your CV. If any of you have anything like that, definitely include it. They are your achievements. Anything you are proud of which shows good qualities, okay? I can't stress that enough. They're brilliant. You're committed. You're a leader. You work as part of a team. You work for other people, okay? Brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I would love to see that on a CV. And then, finally, guys, we have references. And it's perfectly okay to say available on request, okay? References available on request. And that means if they want references, they will ask you for them at a later date. So it's perfectly okay to have available on request, but if you are including references, two is usually enough, and just remember, no relatives, no family members, okay? That was one of the top tips. So that is your CV, guys. That's how to create the perfect CV. Now, a question to make sure you are all listening. Which do you think is the most important for your CV? Now, all of these are important, but which is the most important? Good references. All of your education details. Tailor it for each specific job. Plenty of achievements to show off. A bachelor's or master's degree. So which of these do you think is the most important? Okay? And I see lots of answers coming in and lots of correct answers that I would agree with. So Linda, Lizette, Iman, Goethe as well. Fantastic. Nizreen. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Shima as well. It is number three, okay? Tailor it for the specific job. Because you can have good references, you can have a master's degree, but if it doesn't apply to the job that you're going for, then it's not much good, okay? So the most important thing is to tailor each CV for each specific job. That is the most important. Exactly, Nevin, Alan, Naveed, fantastic, Liliana as well. 
brilliant brilliant work okay so that's the perfect cv guys and that's how to get your cv approved and make it to the next step yes of course i'd love to come in for an interview now let's have a look at your next steps and i want to introduce you to this man here does anyone know who this man is okay Hira, could you please stop could you please stop typing in dots into the chat box because i can't see anyone else's questions if you continually type dots like that i'll have to remove you from the webinar okay so does anyone know who this man is this gentleman is called Satya Nadella his name is Satya Nadella and he works for Microsoft but he doesn't only work for Microsoft he is the CEO of Microsoft so Satya Nadella for anyone who did not know he is the CEO the chief executive officer so the person at the top the very tip top the person who runs the company at Microsoft so let's have a look at Satya's LinkedIn profile so here we have there's the man himself Satya Nadella and we can see he is the CEO at Microsoft and we can see down here that he joined Microsoft in 1992 okay so he's worked there for a long time now let's move down his LinkedIn page and have a look at his education so as we can see here Satya was originally from India Satya studied in Mangalore University in India first and he studied electrical engineering now after studying this in his native language Satya realized that he needed to study this field in English if he wanted to progress and really do what he loved so that's when he moved to the United States oh sorry that's when he moved to the United States and attended the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee to do a master's degree in computer science okay he learned it in his own language first and then furthered his learning to master it through English okay then look what happened he moved on to the University of Chicago Boot School of Business but look at the years he attended the University of Chicago 94 to 96 but we know that he joined Microsoft in 1992 so what does this tell us?